everybody. Welcome back. Is this our fourth video already? Oh man, okay. So we're deep in it. Depending on where you live right now, you are in either your fourth or your sixth week of lockdown right now. And what can I say? The ish is getting real. Something has been coming up this week when I'm talking to clients and also some things that I've been seeing online. A lot of us are struggling with the fact that in the environment of increased stress, our old habits are starting to come back. The pandemic chaos has kind of acted as a magnifying glass. It has kind of stirred up the pot. It is making us feel that we need to go back to some of our old coping mechanisms in order to cope with what's going on right now. I've talked to several clients over the last week who have told me that they're feeling a little bit um, stuck more now than they had been before the pandemic started. They are feeling more compelled to go back and exercise a lot. They're feeling a little more restrictive in their diets and they're getting very frustrated because they feel as though they've come really far and they're like, why are these things coming up again? It seems that a lot of our old coping mechanisms, even though we know they don't work, a lot of us are kind of jumping back to them in the moment of this increased pressure. So if you know anything about me, you know that I, I like to look into the science and see, is this just sort of our perception or is this really happening? So I went and checked out some data that Garmin actually produced uh, very recently. And if you know anything about Garmin, you know they do the watches and other device uh, devices where you can go and record your physical activity. So they've done quite a bit of a breakdown on the types of physical activity that people are doing over the last uh, month or so due to the pandemic. So while it is true that people are doing less indoor exercise, they're going to gyms less, um, and the type of outdoor exercise they're doing is changing, there's actually a very high increase in other types of exercise. People are doing at-home challenges on their treadmills. People are really increasing the amount of walking that they're doing in places where you can still walk outside. People are doing a lot more online workouts. And because collectively we are all nervous wrecks, we are all posting about these things that we think are helping. People are posting so much more on social media about the types of workouts that they're doing and their relationship with their bodies and they're talking about losing weight and gaining weight and they're talking about baking and not baking and it's just, it's nuts out there right now. And your tolerance for all this crap is less. Why? Because we are all so much more stressed than we were before this. Everything we're seeing is just really like a neon bright flashing sign and it's a lot. As usual, people love to use their bodies as an indicator of their success or failure to navigate any situation, but certainly this one. This is so frustrating to me, I cannot tell you. Over the last couple of weeks, I have noticed a real distinct change. Some of the people that I follow on Instagram just normally, or people that I follow on social media just normally, have now started to post things that I think have nothing to do with who they are, but yet now it's all about fitness, it's all about their body, it's all about what they're doing. Some of the worst offenders of this are people that I actually have to have a lot of compassion for because I understand what it's like to work for yourself. So the fitness professionals right now who are really in a pinch because they don't have clients and they don't have income, listen, I understand that's gonna be difficult. However, if you notice an increase in the frequency and pace and urgency of fitness professionals online trying to sell programs right now, so you're getting a lot of increased noise and increased volume right now, and if it bothers me and I find it annoying and I've been recovered for four years, I'm sure some of you find it annoying too. I'm gonna help you navigate this. We're gonna talk about this in a very logical way and I'm gonna try not to get angry. Okay, so some people have said to me, and this is a really legitimate question, if I'm feeling overstressed with what's going on with the pandemic, maybe loss of job, maybe family changes, homeschooling, all these things, I understand. If I am feeling extra stressed out and I'm feeling like I need physical activity or an increase in physical activity, how do I know this is bad for me? There's some questions that you can ask yourself to find out whether or not your physical activity is actually helping you or if it's hurting you. First, is this activity making you feel better for the long term or is it a temporary high? Is what you're doing something sustainable for the long term? Is it something that you feel as though is gonna make you feel good for a very long time, so after a pandemic, or is it something that's just giving you that high bump right in the moment that you need? Second question, are you being kinder to yourself after engaging in these habits, or are they making you put additional pressure on yourself? So for example, are you feeling good about the activity or are you saying, oh my gosh, I did this much today, I need to do 
now that plus more tomorrow and then on and on and on the next day? Are you feeling like you need to reach that certain amount or intensity or type of exercise every single day? Are you making it another box to check in the middle of all the other boxes we all are trying to check right now? Third question, are you nicer to people when you're engaging in this type of activity or are you just being a bitch? Is your fuse shorter? Are you less patient? Are you less kind? And by the way, I mean this before and after the exercise. So in anticipation of the exercise, are you really being a crack? And then after the exercise is over, are you being nicer or are you being kind of crappy? Be honest with yourself. And the fourth question and probably the most important one is, is this physical activity, is it expanding your life or is it contracting it? Think about this. This is hugely important. Is the amount of activity that you're doing or the type of activity you're doing in inviting you to engage with the world, engage with your surroundings in a better and more positive way, thereby expanding? Or is your life becoming contracted and small because you're trying to achieve a certain amount, type, intensity, whatever? This is important right now and it's gonna to continue to be more important as we move out of this panic pandemic mode and into the new world we're creating. Because remember, we're not going back, we're designing a new way forward. A big question in all this for people like us that tend to put a lot of pressure on ourselves is why is this happening to me? Why am I doing this again? You are not a failure. Just get that out of your head right now. The fact of you going back to these coping mechanisms that do not serve you, it's not a reflection of you. It's a reflection of the intensity of the trauma that we are all going through right now. So like, give yourself a break. But some of those underlying reasons why we slip back into bad habits have to do with some of the following ideas. Number one, in all of this, we're insecure. This is totally normal. How are you not going to feel insecure right now? Some of us are questioning um, who we are because we're not able to do the things we normally do. We're questioning for sure who we're gonna be because we, still, we don't really know yet what's coming. Again, these things are totally normal. We might be not letting go of the past by going through a normal grieving process that would be necessary to kind of get through that. And if you're interested to know more about what this looks like, you should check out the video I did last week, which is on grief and the grieving process as we go through this pandemic. We fear change, kind of all of us do. Change is a normal and natural part of human life. It's very important that we remember this. Even when we're talking about things like physical changes, Lots of the times we engage in our old habits because we are afraid of physical change. But physical change is what keeps us alive. A body that does not change is a dead one. Keep that in mind. Speaking of change, another reason why this happens is because we are not willing to look at ourselves differently. We are not willing to see that what we're gonna evolve into might actually be better. Just because we don't know what's gonna happen doesn't mean it's gonna be something bad. So what ends up happening? We go back to our old habits of using our physical body as a punching bag to deal with all of this. So lots of people always say to me uh, that they need physical activity for their mental health. I totally understand this. But I wanna put this into perspective for you so that you understand really what the science says behind this. So there is a wonderful scientist named Richard McNally at Harvard University. He has done a lot of pivotal research on connecting mental health with physical exercise. Two really important studies, I will give you the titles so I don't mess it up, I wrote them down. Aerobic exercise hastens emotional recovery from stress, that's one, and the second one is aerobic exercise helps overcome emotion regulation deficits. So both of these studies show mental health benefits from aerobic activity, but both of these studies show mental health benefits with 25 to 30 minutes of moderate physical activity. And we're talking 25 to 30 minutes on a treadmill or indoor exercise bike. I am not talking Peloton. I'm talking gentle cycling and maybe treadmill walking. In fact, most of the mental health benefits are found between two and a half and three hours of physical exercise a week. Not a day a week. This is well-respected, peer-reviewed research that you can find in journals. This guy is a super expert in this field. And how do I know this? Oh, because I got an A in his class. So you may not need to do the amount of physical activity that you think you need to do in order to get real mental health benefits. So Jill, what do I do now? Well, first of all, you have to recognize that this is your tendency, right? This is the thing that you usually go to when you feel pressure. Just recognize it, know that it's out there, and don't try to hide from yourself. Don't beat yourself up over this, but recognize that it does require a correction. Realize, this is really important, realize that the alternative coping strategies, they might not feel as good 
at the beginning. That is also very normal until your body and your mind can readjust to a different way of managing stress. Realize that increased stress is not going to be combated by activities that increase stress. Huh? It's true. Remember that physical activity over a certain point is going to have detrimental effects on your stress hormones. If you're already feeling stressed and you're trying to fight stress with more stress, guess what happens? Any new practices should be practices that are sustainable. So no quick fixes, no quick hits. We want to come up with coping strategies that we can utilize in the pandemic, after the pandemic, on top of the pandemic, under the pandemic. Oh, here's a fun one that I already screwed up. Recognize that a home workout or a workout that's different than the one you usually do is still a workout. I really messed this up in quarantine. I am not going to lie. I was doing very gentle types of physical activity, home workouts and things. And then I kind of got bored. So I tried a few different things just because I liked the music or because it was uh, dancing. And so I didn't think it was that intense. And then all of a sudden I was not sleeping for a couple of nights and my whole body hurt and felt like a truck hit it. Maybe it's just because I'm old. So you may think that just because you have to move your couch in order to get your workout in, that it's easier than you going outside and running or doing something that you think is more strenuous. That may not be the case. So definitely pay attention to how much you're doing because it might not be what you think. And by the way, this is another one I wanted to mention. It came up with a client this week. The pandemic has not given you the magical ability to subvert overtraining. Just because running is the only thing you can do doesn't mean you should do it until you fall over. And finally, some solutions to this issue. A lot of times on this channel, I talk about journaling. I don't necessarily specify what it is you're supposed to do instead of staring at a blank page, which is truthfully what I would be doing. Whatever journal prompts you're using should help you set an intention. They should help you acknowledge your fears and they should also help you be realistic. So a simple one that I've been using lately is three sentences with just sort of fill in the blank. It starts off with this. Today I will focus on, and then I can fill in what it is that I wanna focus on for the day. It will help me become more, fill in the blank. And then the third sentence is, I will do this by. So I'm focusing on a thing so that I can become more whatever and I will do this by whatever. It should only take about five minutes. Much better when you write it, I've read, versus typing it out. So see if you can just, you know, grab a notebook somewhere and jot it down. But it's a really great way of keeping your brain focused. A lot of habit change requires some rewiring and the best way to do that is to hit it every single day. Solution number two, meditate. Real talk, I hate meditation. I hate it before I have to do it. I don't know how I feel about it while I'm doing it. And when it's over, I am only willing to say that I am begrudgingly happy about it. Not my favorite activity. I would rather be doing kind of anything else. And because I am so resistant to it, it's, I know I need to do it. <laughs> I'm not saying that all these things are super fun, but they are super helpful. Coping strategy number three, make your bed. I'm sort of using this as a metaphor, but remember that the space that you create around yourself really does kind of uh, set the tone sometimes for your mental health. So if your area is cluttered and chaotic, uh, your brain's going to be too. Even if it's just making your bed and the rest you cannot control and don't have time to deal with, understood. But just find some way to create some order in your life. Coping strategy number four is to find physical activity that brings joy. So if you do need to do physical activity, find something that makes you feel excited to do it, that feels good in your body. If you are using your physical activity as punishment of any kind or as some way to numb out or some way to escape from the world, I would rethink it. Next coping strategy is to be outside responsibly. So if for you, you have a terrace or you have a yard and it just means sitting outside for a few minutes, getting some sun on your face, That'll do. For those of you who are in a place where you can get out and walk around, I mean, even better. Being outside in nature is a great way to relax and feel good and breathe oxygen and get air. Vitamin D is good. Next coping strategy, and I'm gonna say this again, I repeat it all the time, but turn off the news. Turn it off. Limit yourself drastically to what you are taking in. You don't realize how much that stuff is absolutely banging on your nervous system. It is not healthy after a certain point. I understand we wanna be informed, we wanna know what's going on, but there comes a time where we just have to stop it because you're not learning anything new, you're just kind of like watching the train wreck over and over again. When in doubt, the final coping strategy is pets, people, and play. If you have a pet, hug your pet. If you have people to be around or connect with, connect with those people as much as you can, and try to figure out a way to incorporate play into your life. Play can be anything you want it to be. 
There are no rules, that's why it's called play. And bringing that type of joy into your life is something that a lot of us in adulthood are not used to doing, and I think that's why a lot of us get stuck. We're afraid to express joy in the same way that we did when we were kids, and it feels really uncomfortable. So I would urge you to find a way to incorporate some fun things into your day or into your life that maybe are even unexpected to you. Ah, <sighs> okay. So, everybody, please, as I always tell you, you've got to be kind to yourself, especially in this time. I am looking forward to this being over just as much as you are, but I also want to make sure that we get through it with ourselves intact. We're coming up with coping skills that are gonna take us through this and into the next phase because we are not going back. We are designing a new way forward. I don't know what that is yet, but we're gonna get there together. I hope this was helpful today. I hope this gave you a little bit of peace and calm understanding that you're not alone as always. Go ahead and follow me on Instagram, A Case of the Jills. If you would like to schedule a mentoring call with me, the link is below at acaseofthegills.com. You can also send me an email at acaseofthegills at gmail.com. Stay safe, stay healthy, don't listen to the president, wash your hands, hug your dog. I love you, bye.